All right, welcome to another The Shades of Dominion update. Uh, today, we are going to be covering the latest development to the actual core set. We don't do this often because we're we're messing with established lore, but this this was particularly special and it's long overdue in my opinion. And we're going to cover the creation of the bullet summons. The bullets now, what are bullet summons? Uh, bullet summons, as you might uh, have already guessed, these are a type of shade summon. They're a type of creature, a type of minion, a type of thing that you typically cast on your side of the battlefield as you go off and gallivant and adventure and destroy enemies and creatures and so forth. However, these little creatures uh, are, are special in that they can double as enchantments for the various weapons and tools that you will use as you adventure. And what they what they do is these can only specifically be used to enchant ranged weaponry. Uh, bows, crossbows, uh, slings, and things that would require uh, an ammunition. So you can technically throw an axe, but you can't use an axe to uh, to enchant it with a bullet summon. It needs to be something that actually has um, either an arrow or a pocket or a, a rook or something. Additionally, they're a little more expensive, admittedly, uh, to enchant them. Uh, they will cost an additional library point, so two spell templates instead of uh, just one. So two library points instead of the one to uh, to add these or to enchant these to an item of your choice. Now, let's talk about the benefits. Um, first, naturally, uh, each attack from your new ranged weapon uh, will have a little more power behind it. That's pretty cool. Uh, that attack will also probably have a few new keyword abilities, whether that's uh, cleave or uh, uh, initiative, whether it's uh, twin strike or whether it's even uh, something as uh, something like uh, poison. So it can have a new keyword. That's pretty cool. But the really cool part about uh, the, uh, an enchanted bullet weapon is that you don't need to reload it. <laughs> you don't need to keep track of ammunition. <laughs> the weapon auto-generates its magical ammunition. And just to add a little more, uh, a little cherry on top, you don't have to spend any more shade when you use one of these weapons. You, you, you hear that? You don't have to spend any more shade to unleash a uh, a, a powered up attack with a magical ability anymore. And your weapon will never run out of ammo. Those are some nifty benefits. I, I do say so myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the beginning, back with the the first uh, Aether Dominion, and we're going to start with the uh, with the, the the original inspiration for the card itself in Magic: The Gathering. Then we're going to take a look at what they look like now in the Shades of Dominion, and lastly, we will then cover what kinds of weapons these new bullet summons can be used to make and so let's get started let's throw some shade everybody let's get at it all right so first up we have the grayscaled crocodile now i'm not going to say that last one because well i i don't feel like going through what how things are pronounced uh, properly in magic the gathering lore it's a crocodile that's what it is. This little 1-1 one, one has, it's just a 1 Aether Shade, 1-1 uh, one, one with Island Walk. Now, in Shades of Dominion, we don't really do uh, Island Walk. 
It's, uh, and this card doesn't really leave much to the imagination. It really is just what it is. It's a crocodile that can swim through island mana and take a bite out of island using planeswalkers. But as I was saying, in the Shades of Dominion, island walk doesn't make that much sense. So instead, he was just a 1-1 with phasing. Meaning that, like a ghost, he could just reach through and damage you regardless of your defense roll, which is a pretty neat trick. But we needed him to become something with a little more oomph. And that's when he became the Sinister Ghast. And it was decided that he wasn't going to be dealing normal damage anymore because he needed to be a little more thematic he's in the illusion attributes so he's going to not deal regular damage he's gonna he's gonna be a power one toughness one with phasing per the island walk and he will be dealing damage in stress counters now uh, every stress counter is a negative one debuff to all skill test rules including combat rolls. So this, if your opponent wants to make any type of roll in combat, or if they want to focus and try and do something else, this stress counter is going to uh, hinder them in that in, in a manner. So, and he also still has phasing, so he can move through and get to you directly and terrify you, but otherwise he can't actually damage you physically. But alas, he's also still just an illusion which means he has this little ability that says whenever he's dealt any damage, he dies immediately. So he doesn't last very long. He's just kind of scary, and he's, you know, he can phase through you. If, you're, if you manage to touch him or hit him in any way, he's just going to disappear. He's just going to vaporize, because he is, after all, an illusion. So he's just a figment of your now scarred psyche that disappears for the moment he takes any damage. Now... The weapons he can inspire are truly on a different level. And that brings us to the Ghastly Javelin. Now, this is a weapon that has been enchanted, so it's going to have a combat roll. You're going to roll your streetwise, and they, your opponent, are going to roll their insight. Whoever rolls highest is the winner. If your defender uh, wins, they don't take any damage. If you win, you deal damage. The Ghastly Javelin is a haunting, wrist-mounted, shade-powered slingshot that deals 1d3 plus 1 damage in stress counters. Treat its projectiles as if they have phasing. So, you shoot off your Ghastly Javelin and you lose your combat roll. It doesn't matter. If your opponent also doesn't have phasing on their armor, you roll a d6 on a, on a roll of 4 or higher, you hit anyway. So, depending on whether or not you make, you make this uh, phasing roll, they're going to take at least two stress counters each time you fire off this javelin. And that is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, being able to have a build where you're just laying on all the stress counters is part of is a build I wanted to really delve into and help other shade mages discover and be able to play so here you have it from the grayscale to the ghastly javelin this is your blue bullet guys hope you enjoy it stay tuned for the next one Bye bye